Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead outlook from Privateer FX. Well, we had some news out over the weekend. We tweeted about it a little bit uh, yesterday, and that was the uh, drone attacks in Saudi Arabia, supposedly knocking out 50% of their production. Um, I've seen some stuff on Forex Live saying it could be weeks before the Saudi oil production returns full capacity. And then I just recently saw something saying they might be back online by Monday. Um, either way, um, stocks in the Mideast that, that trade over the weekend, they got hit. Uh, they were down about 3%, and then it looked like there was some government intervention. Um, and uh, I think they were down about 3 or 4% at one point came back up. So I'm not sure how big of a spike we're going to see in uh, in oil on the open, and we're still six hours away. Um, you can see here uh, with the oil chart, we've got, we had a reversal week lower. We closed kind of, you know, toward the lower end of the range for the week. Um, we did get up and almost test this downtrend line from that November 2018 high. And um, and you know we've got this double bottom here right around 50 bucks and then this this area here last week's high and the trend line right around 59. Um, my guess is if uh, you know if we can if it does pop here in like kind of a you know, liquid open um i mean i don't really see it rallying 10 percent but you never know um i'd be looking to fade somewhere around the 60 level um, and then these old highs, 60, 85, um, you know, maybe there'll be some irrational exuberance on the open, which we, uh, we tend to see in Asia. So that's one to watch out for. Um, you know, stocks have, uh, stocks closed pretty well. Um, I, I still think it's a sideshow. Um, you know, but we did get one of the highest weekly closes in S and P's. Um, 3022 looks like the high weekly close and then 3030 is at high 3029. So, you know, it's that they're, they're holding on, uh, they're holding out hope of a breakthrough in talks between China and the U S on the trade front. You know, there's been talk of some sort of interim deals. Um, again, the situation is extremely fluid. Um, let's take a look at some of the other markets that, um, uh, that really went on a tear. Uh, you know, the big theme last week was a uh, was the big rotation out of the growth stocks and into value. And um, you know, there were some really massive moves early on in the week. So, um, you know, we could probably see some more of that. Um, and that's something that we're, we've been watching all week. And it's highly correlated with this. That would be the 10 year yield. So as global yields are rallying, and you can see this is one of the biggest up weeks we've had, I think since 2008 on uh, the 10 year, you know, we opened up the week down at 156 and we close the week right near the highs at 190. Um, this looks like it's got scope. I could see it getting up to this moving average here and the first third FIBO, which is 212. And uh, there's some weekly highs here, 214. So, you know, it's moved, moved a lot, um, maybe a little bit too far too fast, but uh, we'll be looking to buy bonds, you know, get short the yield here again around this 210 level. Um, again, this is a huge move. Um, we, had, we were making, um, you know, we start putting on short fixed income, looking for higher yields last week. That's worked pretty well. Um, <clears throat> we expressed that with the TLT. Um, you can see here the TLT. If you just want to look at the, we like to use this kind of late, this, this July into early August, you know, the August 1st, which is when the Trump tariff news happened. And you saw um, these big moves up and the TLT follows the actual bond, like the, you know, the, it's 
the 20 plus year bond ETF. And then we had a massive reversal and we've already retraced from the, from the late July lows, we've retraced more than two thirds. You know, so this could easily, could easily get back down and test kind of the August first lows down here, 131 or even down to 130 ish. Um, pop back over to 30 year yield. Um, again, one of the largest moves in years. This looks like it has maybe this old low here. Once we broke that 245 and then the 30 year, it collapsed. Um, so maybe 235 up to 250 would be resistance in the 30 year yield. Um, <clears throat> let's take a look at the, uh, the buns. Remember we had this bearish engulfing week we talked about last week from these highs, massive bearish engulfing, could barely rally at all, close on the lows. This is post ECB. And uh, if we go back to the September 2000, you know, so a year ago, this is a year's range, 171.18, comes in as the, as the third retracement. Um, you know, we're, we're very close to retracing like this whole kind of, was this the middle of July? Once it really rallied, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks. And look at how we had a couple indecisive weeks here. And this is when we started getting bearish puns, um, started buying some puts and, uh, short some futures. And then we got that huge spike down week. Um, so that's the buns. Let's take a look at gold. That's another one we've been playing. Um, you know, these precious metals, we got a lot of fibs drawn here just to look for confluence of, um, support levels, but we had the bearish engulfing week here, which is two weeks ago. And then it closed pretty close to the lows. We're getting into some support here, 1478, um, on the short term swing, uh, somewhere between 1488 and 1478 is, uh, is support is the initial support. If we take that out that I see us getting right down to this 1450, which was that old breakout. And then there's a FIBO 1445 just below. And that's, that is the 2019 range. We're taking the low of 19 in April, um, up to the highs. Um, you know, you could, I could see us retracing. I do like, I, I'm still short gold, but I will be looking to buy it back before the Fed meeting on Wednesday. Uh, silver looks similar, even more of a blow off type panic top. Um, and we have retraced a third of uh, the, you know, what is it, 10 month range. Um, if we want to, if we want to run a shorter FIB and just use the 2019 low, we can attach that one up to the high and uh, yeah, you know, we're right, uh, we're just below the third. So maybe down to 17, 1697. Um, I believe the 200 week moving average comes in at 17. So somewhere between 17, 1697 and 17 um, should act as support. Um, let's see, we talked oil 10 years. So, the, you know, these were the big movers. Uh, copper had a, had a good week. Again, we had the bullish engulfing week here and, uh, now we close right here on the 30, uh, week moving average and above the third fib of the recent sell off. So this is the 2019 high right up about three bucks. Um, I can see this going to 273.80 for sure. You know, maybe even a retest of that old high here, which is we'll call it 280. Um, so I'm just writing these down. Uh, so copper, you know, in, enjoyed a nice rally, and that that's on the back of the improved tone in the uh, China-U.S. trade talks. Uh, currencies, uh, you know. I haven't been paying that close attention to them because there's been much better moves in the other markets like fixed income and precious metals and, 
so they, to me, they've been a little bit of a sideshow. Um, we'll take a look at the euro. We talked about the euro with the reversal week higher two weeks ago, thinking that we've put in a short-term low. And then we had the ECB day where they sold it initially and then they ripped it higher. Um, let's go to the daily just so you can see that price action. This is a massive bullish engulfing day. We now have a double bottom here. Um, I think it pretty much matched it. Um, 109.27. Friday it did close off the highs, um, but a lot of technicians are calling for maybe a retest of this area up here. And uh, that's 112.50, 60 area. I could see that if we draw a fib from the, the high here down to this double bottom. This is huge support on us, 109.25. You can see here we, we pretty much retraced. We got up to 112.10, I think, or 111.10, uh, right below that fib. But, uh, you know, I could see this retracing some more. Um, cable had the best week, um, cable and all the sterling crosses, on some enthusiasm over Brexit. Um, again, haven't been following it that closely, but clearly something's going on here and uh, we've retraced two-thirds of this downdraft there, you know there's this big downtrend from 128 down to 120 we have that panic sell-off uh, just below 120 and uh, it now it looks like it's got some legs and uh, you know if we do get more good news out of the, on the brexit front you know why can't we go back to 126 maybe even 127 35 the 200 day this old high um, don't really have don't really have any positions in that but you know certainly uh, just, we have to pay attention because it was the biggest mover last week um, Kiwi which I was trying to sell and I missed did reverse here's the weekly it had a reverse a lower week one of the few currencies against the dollar that uh, that weekend I haven't said that, and we can take a look at dollar, dollar cat. It got this one wrong. Um, sold it around 132. The figure had a massive rally on uh, on Friday, and you know, if you want to take a stab at a short, I think you can somewhere between this fibo here and the and the 200-day uh, 133.06 probably is a good good risk reward. And if we do get a, a big pop in oil. Which I, you know, I'm still waiting on the news flow. That's why I'm doing this video so early today, because I'm, I'm trying to get my head around uh, what what type of open we'll have in uh, in risk and in, in oil in particular. If we do get a big pop in oil, then Dollar Cat's going to retrace a lot of this um, this move from Friday. Uh, what other currencies are of interest? Aussie, you know, we're hanging here. Um, the big range. July highs down to the low. Uh, we're hanging around this half fib, close around the half fib. You know, I could see this go another, what is it, 68, 80, yeah, another 40, 40, 50 points before you want to be selling that. Um, dollar yen just continues to go up, although we'd have a do doji. So we got up to this resistance level. I was patiently waiting to sell it. Um, sold some around 108.10 against this two thirds fib. And we, you know, keep in mind, we do have the POJ this week. Um, dollar China looks like it has room to retest seven, you know, 698, kind of this old breakout. We had a daily low there, um, you know, pretty ugly week. We, we talked about that last week with that bearish engulf, and then it, it falls straight through. Um, Let's take a look at Aussie yet. Yeah, I thought there might be a trend line there. Nothing yet. Here again, the yen cross, you know, the yen weakness theme. I don't know. I wonder if the market is starting to think that uh, the BOJ is going to act aggressively at the meeting um, this week. It's, there's potential for that. Um, let's take a look at the economic data, and then I'm going to wrap it up here because we're getting to the 15-minute mark. Um, we get, uh, we get nothing really coming out on Monday. Um, 
you know, all the news flow will be about the oil, the supply disruption in Saudi Arabia. Uh, on Tuesday, we get the ZEW out of Germany. That's important. Um, we get some manufacturing data out of Canada and U S industrial production. Um, and then Wednesday, South Korea and export import prices. Those are important. You know, we need to watch that for global trade. Uh, what else do we have out of there? Uh, Canadian inflation is on Wednesday. And then of course the FOMC where we are expecting a 25 basis point cut. You know, the U S data has been surprising to the top side. So we think that this could be uh, more of a, a hawkish, uh, hawkish 25 basis point cut. And one of our, um, one of the guys we follow was saying the most important thing out of the FOMC next week um, will be the most important question for next week is how many participants will project additional rate cuts beyond September. I mean, September's 100% priced. So, you know, if, if it looks like some participants are not calling for more cuts this year, then... I think you're going to get a, you could get a pretty serious, uh, move in the, in the bond market. You know, they're, they're already looking pretty heavy and, uh, you know, I could, I think we could see that 210, 215 level in the, uh, 10 year yields in, our, in a heartbeat. Um, so that's FOMC on Wednesday. Um, we got the bank of England and BOJ coming out on Thursday. Uh, when I guess BOJ is Wednesday, not my time. Um, definitely worth paying attention to the BOJ. Bank of England's not going to do anything, um, you know, with the Brexit hanging in the balance. And then Friday, we got Bank of England's quarterly bulletin, uh, CAD retail sales, and Eurary consumer confidence. So, so not a ton on the economic calendar, but uh, the FOMC is going to be. And, and probably the BOJ will be the, the two most important events of the week. Anyhow, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, good luck training this week. You'll hear from us. Uh, I'll be in front of the screens for the, the open here at 5 o'clock uh, Central Time. Be curious to see what happens to oil. And, um, and you'll hear from us on the European Open. All right, all the best. Good luck. Cheers.